my comrades in gaming. What's shaking? Alright guys, what's up? Ran 400 here, and after the Battlefield 3 review, I guess we should do something a little lighter, but not just yet. I guess I'll save it for now. I want to get another Battlefield 3 gameplay up for you guys, just so you guys can see what it's actually like to play a multiplayer game. With a little bit of commentary, sort of, you know, on it, and the actual gameplay, as opposed to the boring old review. So I guess, um, this is on, this is Rush on Tehran Highway. Which is a very good, it's a very big map. Well, all Battlefield 3 maps are big. Who am I kidding, compared to Call of Duty? <laughs> but, this is Tehran Highway. This is mostly a tank gameplay, so be ready for that one. So, in Battlefield 3, if you're new to the Battlefield 3 franchise, or Battlefield franchise, or you're not really used to it, um, they have vehicles, as opposed to Call of Duty, and they don't have kill streaks. But, in Battlefield 3, you sort of have to be more of a team player, like right here, I am a, I'm the engineer class, so I actually have a little repair tool where I can repair the tank. And if you look in the middle of your screen, you'll see a little wrench with a bar, which is the tank's health. So you can see I get a squad repair bonus for that, which is, in essence, how we take out this tank, because he's not doing that. Either he's not an engineer, or, well, the guy shooting actually isn't me, it's my buddy. So we have teamwork here to take out this other tank, where normally we would probably have lost that because he had the high ground. So that's, it's one of the things that separates it. As far as the... See, I got a maintenance efficiency ribbon right there for that. One of the things that most people overlook in Battlefield 3, actually, that I found very useful is the spotting, which is if you press the back button on the 360 controller. Well, I'm playing 360. Um, same with PlayStation 3, though. You press back, and it spots the enemy for you. It'll put a little red indicator above their head, a little red triangle, and which is very useful because your teammates can see them. Otherwise, they won't appear. See how um, this guy's a red triangle above his head? That means we indicated him on the map for us and for our buddies. So as far as this is concerned, the tank can be one of the most devastating weapons in the game, if you know how to handle it properly. Many of the people use, um, I use the engineer class a lot, just for the sake, for the sole reason that I have an RPG with me, or some sort of something to take it out. If you play the engineer class long enough, you unlock stuff such as the M M15 um, AT tank mine, which you can put it, you can put it in the ground, and it basically acts as a if a vehicle walks over it or rides over it, it'll blow up under them to damage them. Which is what... They can be avoided if you see them on the map or if you just see them, but many people overlook them very easily. So it's always good to use those. And many people also use rockets, which is what we're getting harassed with right here. But we were able to attack the enemy enough just so that they were a little bit off base. But yeah, see he killed us with an RPG. So that's one of the reasons I like to run around with the RPG as opposed to some of the other classes. But each of the classes has its, or each of the kits has its own pros and cons with it. As far as Tehran Highway is concerned, if you're going to play Tehran Highway, one of the tips I can give you initially, oh, and don't spawn on your teammate when there's an enemy right behind him. But one of the tips I can give you initially is that if you're on the attacking side, you know that it takes a long time for you to run up to their, their base to plant the bombs at A and B. So... You can be a sniper and snipe them if you don't have any intentions of actually going to A and B to plant and provide cover support and mark for your teammates. Another thing that you can do is we, you have tanks and hummers and jeeps that spawn for you to travel with, and I would advise you using those to either harass them in the tank like we do here, or to transport your troops to get up to it. Because as a whole, there's a rock in the middle, which I'm sort of looking at right now, but that rock in the middle, many people like to sit up there and pick people off as they're walking up. So it's very important that you have vehicles to either distract them, distract them, attack them, or use them just as troop transports, which a lot of people overlook, troop transportation. So I'm playing Rush right now, and if you're new to the Battlefield franchise, and Battlefield 3 veterans probably hear this all the time, but <laughs> what Rush is, is there's two sets of objectives. There's A and B, and what you have to do, the whole goal is you have to plant A and plant B, before your tickets run out if you're on the attacking side. You can see in the bottom left, right above the HUD, there's an ATT and it has 31 right now. What that means is that we have 31 reinforcements left, or um, guys left. Once that runs out, if it goes down to zero, that means we lose. So you want to plant the bombs before the, that goes down to zero. So killing the enemy isn't a necessity. Their whole, their whole goal is to kill you and prevent you from planning. So if they can hold A and B, then they win. 
So right now, instead, my tank was almost destroyed, and I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? I think I distracted them enough. I've killed a good bit of them before they respawn. So let's arm A before before they get here. Which is a good idea in theory. In practice, you need a lot of support, because many times there's always at least one or two people, and you see all the people watching and coming over here to stop me. But there's usually at least one or two people watching, like, A or B. But a lot of times people get distracted, so... You always have to be a little bit, a little bit leery. Also, one of the things that a lot of people like to do if you're new to playing the multiplayer is they like to put tactical lights on, or laser sights. I have a laser sight on mine, actually. And what the tactical light does is it allows you to see a little better, and it also blinds the enemy close up. I'm a little bit mixed with them. I don't use the tactical light that much, just because if you're playing in something like Metro, or if you're very far away, it doesn't blind the enemy that much, and they can see exactly where you are. So it's almost more like you're kind of putting a little flag. You're like, hey, hey, right here, right here, shoot me. If you're really close up, though, in a, in a room, and you come into a room with somebody who has a tactical light on, they'll blind the heck out of you. You will not be able to see a thing. So it's useful in that regard. I don't know if it actually causes, like, you to be less accurate, or if it's just there to, like, dazzle you. But it's, it's, it's very blinding. So it's very good close quarters, is what I'm saying, basically. And far away, not so much. Another thing people want to take advantage of is later up in the levels you unlock certain things which can be useful to you. Actually, one of the things that I didn't notice initially, which are pro probably a bunch of Battlefield 3 veterans are probably going to be like, Randy, you're a moron, is you unlock perks and stuff, or you unlock different unlockables for vehicles and stuff. So for the tank, you can unlock something what's called the auto reloader, which basically reloads your cannon much faster. So if you're facing off against a tank one-on-one -on -one where you have an auto-reloader and they don't, and you hit every shot and they do, chances are you're going to win because you have the auto-reloader and they don't, and you can shoot faster. But if you go into the actual menu and you go to your um, loadouts and you click the right bumper, that'll bring you to that setting. That'll bring you to the vehicles. So be on the lookout for that whenever you're modifying your character, modifying your classes, because that's very important. Another thing that you need is really good communication. You don't actually... I was playing by myself, so I didn't really have that good communication with my squad since they didn't have mics. But it's always good to play with a few friends, maybe get some communication going, if you're trying to take something such as B right now, which we're having a lot of trouble with. Actually, I actually don't know if anybody else is going to plan it but me in this game, but oh well. You can see by the length of the video that we don't actually win, because we're already down to five tickets. So one of the things also that my friends are going to comment on and say that it's true, is that I don't play the, in Call of Duty and Black Ops, I never played the objective, I'm gonna be honest, I was, I was a Killmonger, I was Killhawk, you name it, I was just not playing the objective, so, <laughs> in this you actually have to play the objective to win, so don't think that just because you got a lot of kills you're gonna win, see I was 10-5, I was the MVP, <laughs> I was the MVP and we still lost, because we didn't really play the objective very well, but yeah, a lot of the things that, um, one of the things is squad communication. So another thing that's different from Call of Duty from Battlefield is that you can spawn in your squad. And spawning in your squad's good so that you don't have to start way back at the beginning. But it can also be bad as if you saw you can spawn in your squad who's under fire. And if you spawn on him, you're probably get most likely going to die. But it makes you closer to the engagement. And another thing is that as a sniper class, you can put a mobile spawn point. So keep that in mind whenever you're playing. It, it gives a more tactical advantage to you. So that's that's about all I would say to that. So hope you guys have a great day. Um, William, if you're watching this, happy birthday, by the way. So I will see you guys next time. Later. Peace out.